at the feet of Jesus. Oh, what words we hear him say. As we sit this morning, may he shower his blessings upon us while we sing hymn number 47. Come, thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Hymn number 47. The organist will give us the tune. <laughs> shall continue with number 484. 484. Christ, our mighty captain, he leads against the foe. Amen. He will never falter. 
when he bids us go. Amen. Amen. Though his righteous purpose we may never know, yet we will follow all the way. Satan's fearful onslaughts cannot make us yield. While we trust in Christ, our buckler and our shield, pressing ever on the spirit sword, we wield and we follow all the way. Amen. For it all. assurance we have in you. We thank you, Father. We know, Father, as long as we are at your side, we are willing. Oh, Father, bless your congregation. We pray you, dear Lord God. We thank you for how you keep us from day to day, from week to week. And we thank you, Father, that it, you have made a convenience for us to be gathered before you to give you our worship and adoration. Oh, Lord God, bless your people. You know, all of us, we pray you, dear Lord. We are winners. We feel the challenges that may be in our way. We look to you, Father. Oh, Lord God, give us the victory. Give us the victory. Pray you, dear Lord. As we are before you, you know the request we have brought individually. Father, oh, have mercy. Have mercy. You care. You care. You can do good to your people. Amen. We pray you, dear Lord, give us testimonies, Amen. Father. We thank you, Almighty Father. You have come and you have a message for us. You have taught us 
We pray that they learn it, they teach it, Father, strengthen our faith. Amen. Now you will talk to us, to encourage us. Speak to us in your way. Oh, Lord God. Give us understanding for your way. And the grace, Father, to obey you and to always be by your side. Thank you for your loving hand. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we listen to the following announcements? We take this opportunity to welcome each and every one to today's service. I'm sure you have come in to meet our God, who is also ready to bless. We want to give a special welcome to any person who is worshipping with us in this tabernacle for the first time. If you are a first timer in this tabernacle, we want to request that you stand for us to really appreciate you and give you a very warm welcome. Anybody worshipping with us for the first time. This afternoon, 2.30, in the classroom, we're going to have the roundtable conference in Ever, Ga, and Akan. Please make sure you attend and you will be blessed. Then at 4 p.m., we'll have special prayer meeting is very special in the sense that our brethren in Nigeria are still in their elections. Usually they post election management is more of a problem than the election itself. So we want to continue to pray for them that all will end well. Amen. It's also very important because the, this weekend we're going to have our youth camp where all the youth of this church in Ghana will assemble here for a special program. Since we measure our success in terms of the blessings that we receive, during such programs, we need to start praying that God will package special blessings as our youth come down and bless them abundantly. Amen. We'll continue with our media programs in terms of Tuesday morning on Unique FM 95.7, 5.30. The Apostolic Faith will give the program Light of Hope. It's in English. On Thursday, same period, 5.30 in the morning, this time on Obunu FM in Ghana, we will have the program Jesus, the Light of the World. And Obunu FM is 96.5. Then this very evening, on Amania FM 93.3, 6 to 7, we we'll also have another program by the church. Please, I will plead with you to listen to these programs and invite your neighbors, your colleagues, your workmates, your classmates, to listen to these programs, and God will use them to bless him. And as he or she is blessed, God will bless you as well. 
Tuesday to Friday, we'll still continue with our daily prayer meeting, 6.30 to 8.30. So take note, our prayer meeting has not ended. We have been encouraged because our prayers are yielding results. And we need to intensify these prayers. Could you believe that during this time, three members of our church at various places and at various times had been kidnapped? And they were demanding for ransom. But we sent prayers ahead. And by God's grace, all the three have been released without paying a cobble. So please, it shows clearly that God is answering our prayer. In fact, in the case of the third one, they wanted to use him for some rituals. As much as they tried, they couldn't use him. So they eventually drove him away. God really answers prayer. So this week, we are going to continue to pray. Because our elections are also ahead next year. If there any good thing happens to them, we are assured our God will also answer our prayer. So these prayers will continue Tuesday to Friday. We are encouraged by the attendance, but we still believe more could attend so that we unite in prayer. As I've said, this weekend, between the period of Friday and Sunday, we are going to have the youth camp. It is just the title which says youth camp. But I was telling members of the church that in the service of God, we are all youth. We never grow old. I'm the chief youth. So we will work together with the youth during this period as we try to attend their programs. Fail, fail, fail programs. Let us not absent ourselves and God will bless us. Thirty minutes after the devotional service, all workers of this church, ministers, Sunday school teachers, choristers, those in the electronics and ushers, we are all meeting at the prayer room 30 minutes after the devotional service for a special program. Please do not absent yourself. And electronics, make sure we have a public address system in the prayer room. We'll still continue with our year of evangelism as declared by Weka. Weka has declared that this year is a year of evangelism. So it has been programmed. The house-to-house -house evangelistic will take place two times a month. And that is the third and fourth week of each month. In that period, all the saints, without exception, three o'clock, we meet here and move to the neighborhood for this house to house. During that time, all church activities during the period will halt, but all other church activities will take place in the first and second week of the month, so that by four o'clock every Sunday we are back either for prayers or for revival and evangelism service. But we are sacrificing 
the time between three and four for this work. This is to enable all to participate fully. We wish to announce the home call of Sister Mary Ama Keswa Bidin Emisa. She is the sister of Sister Patient Araba Mba and Sister Emilia Bidin Emisa, and a, an in law of Brother Chuks Mba. She has passed on to glory last Sunday, 19 February. The funeral arrangements are as follows. Saturday, 11th March, 2023, at the All Nations Food Church, Gospel Church at Tessano, near Tessano Cluster of Schools at 9 a.m. And the thank giving service will also take place the following Sunday at the same place. Our sisters and our brother invite us to this sundra. Let us all rally around them in this moment of grief. So if you see Sister Mansa, or you see Sister Emilia Bidin Emisa, or you see Bra Chuksimba, let us all uh, console them and comfort them. God bless. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
find a Bible reading from Proverbs. Proverbs 3 from 13 to 20. Proverbs 3, 13 to 20. About now, we'll be back in the morning. I'll be back in the morning. Proverbs 3, 13 to 20. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. 14. For the merchandise of it is better than merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that cast desire, and not to be compared unto her. 16. Length of days is her right hand, and her left hand reaches an honor. 17. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. 19. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. 20. The last verse. By his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. <laughs> Press onward, press onward, and in the Lord, remember the promise, proclaimed in his word, he guided the footsteps, directed the way, of all who confessed in believing, Obey, believe and obey, 
Turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty 
of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God has taught us about wisdom today in our Sunday school. But we were told that it is the fear of God which is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So we want to examine the topic, importance of the fear of God. The importance of the fear of God. From where we have read, God created us human beings for a purpose. And we were created differently from animals. God created us in his own image and gave us a sense of wisdom, a discerning spirit. And therefore, he had an expectation from us. So he gave us this wonderful command that we should fear him. We should fear him and obey all his commandments. That is your duty. That is my duty. If we perform this duty creditably, we can be considered as people of wisdom. But we, we fail. I don't want to say that we could be considered as foolish. But that is exactly what we are. If we fail to fear God and obey his commandments. By the fear of God, we are referring to referential fear. God is not kakai. That when we see him, we run. He so loves us. He always has an inviting face, an inviting call, an inviting smile. So, so for such a God, our fear for him is because he has done us so good. In our Khan language, we say something, say, Obiya o papa, now how? If somebody is so good to you, he more or less puts a burden on you. True of us. So that even at the point where you are so annoyed, you have been so provoked, and you wanted to take action, you wanted to display, and you see the face of that person, what happens? You are stopped. So God has done it so well. In fact, when the psalmist look at how good God has been to us, he had to exclaim, what is man that you are so mindful of him? With all our sins, with all our disobedience, with all our stiff nakedness, our God still loves us. And he always extends a hand of invitation. So you and I should fear this God. And once we fear this God, it goes along with obeying his commandments. May God help us to do this duty with all the love it deserves. 
So if you fear this God and you obey his commandments, in fact, fearing him, he has mercy on you and then he grants you his salvation. Amen. The greatest on earth, salvation. He gives it to you. Then you become wise so that you will be able to obey all his commandments. Then you join his sheepfold. Then you become a child of God. Who does not want to become a child of God? I want to. And to remain a child of God until Jesus comes. And the way to it is to fear this God. May we understand how important the fear of God is. In fact, Job observed, let us even look at right from the Old Testament time. We remember at the time Moses was leading the children of Israel. His father-in-law visited him. And he discovered that Moses was working himself to death because he sits down morning to evening, people coming and going, coming and going, attending to their problems. He realized that it was too much. So he gave him this advice. Shall we read the advice from Exodus 18? 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able-bodied men, such as fear God. Amen. Such as fear God. Men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them as their rulers, as rulers of thousands, as rulers of hundreds, and as rulers of fifty, and as rulers of tens. So the criteria for selecting people to be rulers was those who fear God. Amen. Because those who fear God will obey God automatically. The two are twins. They don't go leaving each other. Anybody who fears God, fears sin, amen, and fears the judgment that will follow sin. Also, such people walk closer with God. Such people follow after the full steps of God. And we consider such people as men and women of wisdom. May you be one. May I be one. In fact, when God himself was trying to tell Satan, was testifying to Satan about Job, in Job 1.8, let us hear what he said. Job 1.8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on earth, a perfect and an upright man? Let us hear what has made him perfect and upright. One that feareth God, amen, and escheweth evil. So what had made Job an upright man, a perfect man, a man of wisdom, was that he fears God and he hates evil. He fears evil. He fears sin. May we fear sin. May we fear God. In fact, the same writer 
in our hymn book number 17, the fourth verse said, Fear him, ye saints, and you will have nothing else to fear. Amen. Fear him, ye saints, and you will have nothing else to fear. Make his service your delight, and he will make your wants his care. Amen. So once you fear this God, you, what, who, what else will you fear? If you have this God in you, who is greater than any power outside, who would you fear? He assures us, thousands will fall here, 10,000 will fall here. We will only see it with our eyes. It will not come to us. Amen. That any weapon fashioned against us, he didn't say some weapons, any weapon that is weapon that is fashioned against us shall not prosper. Amen. So why don't we be wise? Why don't we fear this God? We hear people who fear witches and wizards. If you are a child of God, they know you. Some of them cannot even face you face to face. I've experienced it before. I greeted somebody, a close relation. He was talking with somebody, so my hand entered her hand. As soon as he saw it, I don't know what was hot in my hand, my, but my hand was normal. They should rather fear us. Amen. Why? Because we fear God. And therefore, we fear nobody else. Amen. Let us understand this message. Fear him, ye saints, and you will have nothing else to fear. Amen. When Satan wanted to attack Job, could he go on his own? No, because there was a hedge of fire around him. So he had to plead with God, if really you want me to attack Job, remove the hedge. May we continue to fear this God, so that this hedge will be around us forever and ever. Amen. Satan himself will. If Satan could not venture, then you are talking of witches and wizards who are the lowest of those in that evil realm. May God help us so that we really understand this. In fact, Job observed that there were some people, if we read Job 21, 14 and 15. Job 21, 14 and 15. And people are with the same habits today. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. 15. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? I have heard somebody say, oh, you people, you worry, worry God too much. Today you are going to check. Today we are going for meeting. I don't need anything from God. May God forgive that soul. So you, you go to church because you need somebody, something from God. Such a person. On earth, he may do well. He may occupy a position of honor. He may have wealth, fame, known all over. At a point, David was envious of uh, 
uh, sinners. Lord, they are doing so well. Why? God asked him, Job, David, sorry, David, have you considered their end? Have you considered their end? May we fear God because something awaits us. This is just the song said, this world is not our home. We are just mere passerbys, pilgrims, and uh, strangers. Our home is beyond the skies. My prayer is that you will so fear God that you have the hope in you that your home is beyond the skies. Amen. If you are in such a state, I assure you, you are a man, you are a woman of wisdom. Amen. Who has prepared? After all, how many years are we spending on this earth? Maximum 100, 120. Ah, 130. He's old though. But let's compare 130, 150, 200, even the Methuselah time where they were 600 and so. Compared with eternity. Amen. Unending, everlasting. In key, we will say, Infinsa, Mufinsa. Unending. This small period we are spending on this earth, fear God, obey Him, obey His commandments, so that you spend a time of bliss, a wonderful time with God forever and ever. Human beings don't want it. Is that wisdom? I'm asking, is that wisdom? Let us fear this God. Walk in his ways. In fact, in our Sunday school, we were saying that a person who fears God, a poor person who fears God and has lined his life, life according to the word of God, obeying all his commandments, he and a rich sinner who is happy. If it were Sunday school, I would have demanded an answer from you. A poor, wretched person, as far as godly, uh, earthly standards are concerned, who has the spirit of God in him because he fears God. Such a person, let us note, is rich towards God. Amen. Such a person is amassing treasures somewhere else. May your treasure be there. Let your treasures be there and not on this earth. On this earth, what will happen? You will leave them behind. There is this story of a man. He had so many stores in Kumasi. And all the keys he keeps the bunch of keys. He goes and opens the door every morning. Nobody ever holds those keys. And when it's closing time, he goes, after the accounts, he locks the No member of the family can hold the key. Then at the point of death, one of the mischievous nephews. He was just lying there. Took the keys to him and said, What well, Uncle, these are your keys. Oh. He just managed to lift up his head and said, At this point, what are these keys to me? Amen. He realized that they are fleeting. He is going somewhere. Does he have stores there to have keys? There was this young girl, three years old. 
the father a billionaire, businessman, travel today he's in Paris, the next day he's in Tokyo, the next day he's in uh, uh, Frankfurt, he's in London, he's in New York, he's here. And everywhere he has his business, he has a mansion there. So when he travels, at times one month, the small girl will not see him. Then one day, this man passed on. The mother was trying to explain to the girl that the father had died. Say, what, what do you mean by he has died? And he said, it means that where he has gone, he will not come back again. The small girl asks a million dollar question. Does daddy have a mansion there? Because he has one in Paris, one in London, one in uh, Tokyo. Talk of all the big cities, one in Frankfurt. Does he have a mansion there. Jesus says he's preparing a place for those who fear God, who obey his commandments, who are saved by grace and are living in their graces. Do you have a mansion there? If you don't have, then you don't have wisdom. If I don't have, today, I will seek to have wisdom through fearing God, asking him to forgive me, wash me with his precious blood so that I can enter the sheepfold, so that I will be one of his sons and daughters. Fear of God. This is what it can do for you. This is what it can do for me. May God help us. Do you remember even in the uh, New Testament what they said about Cornelius? Cornelius was a Gentile unknown to the commonwealth of Israel, commonwealth of the Jews. But there was something about him which endeared him before God, which made him a child of God. Cornelius, let us read Acts chapter 10, verse 2. Let's start from 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Let us hear this. A devout man and one that feared God, amen, with all his house, which gave arms to the people and prayed to God always. Amen. Because of that, God had to send Peter, the leader of the uh, apostles, to him. God will send an angel to you today. God will send a man of God to you today because you fear God. And that God is ready to answer whatever your prayer is. Whatever your heart desire is. May we fear God. And God will also honor us. Throughout the Old Testament, let's look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now Israel, I want to put my name there. And now the queen, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, amen. To walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, 
which I command thee this day for thy good. Fear the Lord. That was the beginning. Because he feared the Lord, the subsequent ones followed. He was able to walk in all his ways. He was able to love the Lord. He was able to serve the Lord, the Lord with all his heart and was able to keep his commandments. Amen. May we fear this God. Our God is good. He's a wonderful, gracious, merciful, compassionate God. In fact, he even says he has no pleasure in the death of a sinner, of the wicked. So if by grace of God you are here today, it is God who has brought you. He wants to save you. He wants to take you from the camp of the wicked and place you in his camp. And what did he say? You should separate ourselves. We should not touch the unclean thing. As in Psalm 1, you separate yourself from the ungodly, from sinners, from the scornful. Take your stand for God. Delight in his way. Then he says in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, Then I will be thy father, and you will be my sons and daughters. Amen. So let us be wise today. Let us fear God this very moment. Take our stand. That God, we want to come to you. We want to embrace you, but God will say, hey, wait. I'm ready to embrace you, but your sins. Are we prepared to forsake these sins so that we can make heaven our home? Yes, we should. Yes, we should be prepared to forsake all those things so that God will welcome us as members of his family. Amen. Amen. As a member of God's family, the Bible says, happy are you. Amen. Blessed is you. Amen. So we have a stand to take today. In fact, in Malachi 3.16, the book of Malachi 3.16, we are told that, oh, it will be wonderful. How would you feel if God himself gets a book of remembrance for you because you fear him? Amen. Let's read Mal Malachi 3. 16. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that taught upon his name. Amen. The most wonderful thing is for God himself to take a pen and write a book of remembrance. Why? Are you anybody special? The reason is that you fear God. You obey his commandments. You follow his footsteps. A wonderful book of remembrance will be opened. Your name will be written in the book of life. And as you lead good life, they will be marked against you, building up for you treasures in heaven. Hey, your mansion may be wonderful. Wonderful. Something you have not seen on earth. And then you will be ushered in. Then you ask God, does this belong to me? He said, yes. Because once you are on earth, you feared me. 
You obeyed my commandments. You walk in my footsteps. Because of that, this decoration is for you. I don't know whether you can imagine that mansion. A mansion in a city. That city, the uh, streets are paved with gold. Amen. If you get a gold as big as this, but I want to assure you, if you fear God and worship him and obey all his commandments, the gold people are so puffed up with, you are going to walk on it. You are going to walk on it. Ah, may ya chia or ho. May ye match ya. Amen. Are you not prepared to walk on the street of gold? Not because I'm anybody, but because I came into this contact with God and I feed him. That is all. And I surrendered my life to him. And he's piloting my life. I want to tell you, I have no regrets whatsoever for coming across this God and for following him. My desire is that I will continue to follow him to the end. Just as I wish for myself, so I wish for all of you. That we will fear this God. Because he says, it's those who continue to the end who will be saved. May God help us. So a book of remembrance will be open for you. Proverbs. You know, Proverbs was written by a very wise man. The wisest so far. So whatever he says, and in fact he has experienced most of the things he said. So also David, the Psalms. So when you read them, you are enriched. Proverbs 22, 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Amen. Do you want riches? Do you want honor? Do you want fame? It will come by humility and the fear of God the law. Let us turn to Psalms, one written by another person who was writing from experience, David. Psalm 19, verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. The fear of the Lord is clean. In fact, obeying the commandments of God, they are simple. God will not demand anything greater than what you can endure from you. Pray on this altar. Forsake your sins and let me save you. Is it difficult? So if you refuse to do it, are you wise? That's why you are quiet. Come to the altar. Bring all your sins. I am ready to Take them away. Wash them away. Provided you confess with your own mouth, repent of it, and then forsake it. That God, once you save me, I'm not going back. I will forgive you. Very simple. Like Neymar, go and dip yourself into the river Jordan seven times. Is it difficult? Rather, he was pointing to better rivers. Maybe that is what you are saying. I was expecting that you come and put your hand on me and maybe blow tongues. 
We don't blow tongues here. We speak our language so that you can understand. May God help you. So if you expect that for you to be saved, a minister should come, put his hands on you, and blow tongues on you, you are making the greatest mistake. Simple. In fact, he said the way is so simple that a fool will not get missing. May God help us. Let us fear God. Let us be wise. And our God will see us true. And you know what is so wonderful? That if you fear this God, he will even share secrets with you. Psalm 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. I think you heard me. Let, let, let's uh, sample with a big amen. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. When God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, whom did he share? Abraham, because Abraham feared him. Abraham had faith in him. Abraham was a faithful servant. Amen. God is ready to share his secret. Nothing will be hidden. Amen. Psalm 33, verse 18. Psalm 33, verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. May the eye of the Lord be upon you. May it be upon me, because we fear him. The eye is not upon us for nothing, no. It is red eye, so that the enemy cannot come near. It did not end there. Psalm 34, verse 7. Why is the eye of the Lord upon us so much? He has positioned an angel to watch over us. He says, the angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Amen. His eyes is upon you. His eyes is even upon the sparrow. Therefore, God watches over us and has built a hedge around us. God has made us a no-go area. They even once know it. Once they see your forehead here, hey, they will pass. During the time of the Passover, the angel of destruction, wherever he had, the mark, that red mark. If you are saved, you are marked with the blood of Jesus. And the evil ones know it. And when they see you, some of them cannot even look at you face to face. If you are very watchful, those with evil powers, even in your family, they never want to look eyeball eyeball with you. When they want to greet you, it's eyes right or eyes left. We have powers. If we have God, what else do we want? I don't need anything apart from God. Amen. For wonderful things await us. Hebrews. 12:28 The book of Hebrews 12:28 Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God 
sorry, acceptably with reverence and godly fear. With reverence and godly fear, we shall receive the kingdom. Amen. So, fear, the fear of God, is so important. It will give you wisdom. If you want to see the benefits of wisdom, just read uh, Proverbs. Proverbs, right from 1, from verse 8 to Romans chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 8, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom wisdom and the benefits as we close let me read once more what we read as our uh, bible reading as our scripture reading as we read proverbs 3 proverbs 3 i wish as i'm reading you will stamp with a very good amen and appropriate those which are for you to yourselves. And then we go on our knees to pray. Proverbs 3.13 Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Amen. amen. If you want to be happy, find wisdom. And how do you find wisdom? Fear God. Amen. And the man that getteth understanding for the merchandise is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof of fine gold. Amen. Amen. That wisdom is greater than fine gold and silver. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. In fact, if you have peace, perfect peace, the one which Christ gives, no rich man on earth is better than you. With billions, they come by. With billions, they imprison themselves. If you go to some of the houses, the gates that you will open before you get to him. May God help us. But you, you can sleep on the veranda during the night. True or false? Especially when the rooms are hot. Which rich man can sleep there? He puts on air condition of, upon air condition and should his uh, cat scratch the door. The way he will wake up. Jump up. They don't sleep oh. Wisdom, fear of God will give you peace beyond human understanding which they cannot get. He is a tree of life to hit them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom had founded the earth. The Lord founded the earth by wisdom. If we want to live in the world where he has founded, we have to be wise. Build upon the rock so that whatever stormy the rains may be our building will stand that is wisdom and that is obtained through the fear of God as we think stick in three the altars are open <laughs>
Father, we thank you for your word through your servant you have given us. Lord, help us and give us wisdom. Help us to hear you. Help us to obey all your commandments. For when you do that, it shall be well with us. As we have come on the altars of prayer, Lord, meet us and help all our uh, 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 in all our problems, oh God, solve them for us. Jesus Christ, meet us and lift us up in you. Help us, oh God, and give us a clean heart. We want to serve you to the end. We know that you're going to help us solve every problem and help us rejoice in you. This and many blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with us, amen.